watching it's time for some more science fun with GSA at home my name is Caitlin and today we're going to be thinking about our brains what do they do and how do they do it let's get into the basics first so your brain is an organ that's found inside your head inside your skull up here now the average human brain was a little over a kilogram which is a little bit heavier than this bag of flour here that's about two percent of your total body weight now, your brain is in charge of everything you do if you think about moving, playing, being creative, those are all things that your brain controls. And those kind of actions we choose to do. So we call those voluntary actions. But there are also lots of things our brain does for us without us having to think about it. Like keeping our heartbeat steady, making sure we're the right temperature, keeping our balance. We don't have to think about those things. So we call those involuntary actions. Our brain just does it for us. Now, the brain is a bit like a command center for the rest of the body. It receives information from the environment around us and from inside our bodies and decides what it's going to do next. To do all those different jobs all at the same time, it has to be super organized. So let's have a look at the brain. There are four main sections to the brain. The cerebrum, the cerebellum, the inner brain and the brain stem. The largest part of the brain is called the cerebrum. It has lots of folds across its structure and is split down the middle so your brain's actually in two halves. There's a bridge in the middle called the corpus callosum that allows for information to be sent from one side to another. The next largest part of your brain is the cerebellum, right at the back of your head below the cerebrum. This part is important for balance and for coordinating movement. The inner part of your brain has sections which can help us tell when we are hungry, thirsty, too hot or too cold. The brain stem connects our brain to our spinal cord right down our back. This part is important for controlling our reflexes, regulating our heartbeat and our breathing, as well as regulating when we feel sleepy or awake. So today we are going to be focusing on the cerebrum, the largest part of the brain. And to show you how it organizes itself to do lots of different jobs, I'm going to be using a brain hat. So we can see on here, the brain is divided up into lots of different sections. These sections are called lobes. We're gonna have a look at each one and what different jobs it does. So we'll start right at the front with this part here, which is handily called the frontal lobe. In this area, we have sections that allow us to do decision-making, handle all our logic skills. We can be creative, think about music and art, and also understand how to control our emotions as well, which is all very important. There's also an area in this part of the brain called the premotor area. This allows us to plan our movements before we move. Now, if we start to have a look towards the back of the brain, we've got another lobe here called the parietal lobe. This is really important for helping us to process information we get from our senses, things like touch or pain. We can do a little experiment to test out our parietal lobe's ability to tell between different pieces of information. For this, you're going to need a partner or someone to help you. So go off and grab one of them and we'll get started. Once you have someone to help you, one person will close their eyes and the other person will lightly tap them on the arm. Can you tell if it's one finger or two fingers that are touching you? And what about if the person puts their fingers really close together? Is it one finger or two fingers that are touching you? This can be really tricky. Our skin is covered in sensory receptors that send information to our brain. And if the information that's coming from our skin is too close together, it can be really tricky to tell them apart. Now this is all controlled by your parietal lobe in your brain. At the very back of the brain is the occipital lobe. This is where the information from our eyes is sent. So our eyes take in light and try to make sense of the world around us. They send a picture up to the brain, which is actually upside down. And the occipital lobe's job is to flip it the right way up. When we use both eyes, you get a pretty clear picture of what's going on around us. But your eyes actually have a blind spot. I have a little test here that can help you find your blind spot. On the left, we have a red dot. And on the right, we have a blue dot. I'd like you to focus on the red dot first. Without moving your head, close your right eye. If you're sitting at the right distance, the blue dot should disappear. That's when it's perfectly lined up with your blind spot. Don't worry if you don't get it right away. You might have to move around a little bit to find it. Try it with your other eye now. Focus on the blue dot and close your left eye. Did you see it? Or well, not see it? That blind spot is where the optic disc is. 
It's a little hole where all the nerves and blood vessels enter your eye. Now blind spots aren't a problem in our daily life and that's because we have two eyes that take in a lot of the same information and a very powerful brain that can put those two energies together. It's pretty amazing, right? This bottom part of the brain is called the temporal lobe. In this part, we have an area that can help us to process hearing information so we can recognize and understand when people are talking to us. There's also an area for visual processing so we can recognize faces and familiar objects. Towards the inner part of this lobe, there's a structure called the hippocampus. It's very important for learning, memory and emotions. So hopefully a really active part of your brain right now. If you'd like to make your own brain hack, first ask an adult permission to download and print this pattern. Once you have that, you're ready to assemble it. Follow along the instructions here. So once you've got your pattern printed out like this, you want to get yourself some scissors, some tape or glue. I only have tape, so I'm gonna use that. Colored pencil or pen so we can color it in. And because it gets a little bit tricky when we're putting it all together, you might want to ask a grown up to help you. So first things first, we are going to color in our brain hats. We We've got lots of different areas that we wanted to talk about today, as well as some extra ones that we didn't get to mention. So use your coloured pencils or pens and colour those in. So once you're finished, your brain hat is ready to put on. You can see that the lobes actually line up with where they will be inside your head. We have our frontal lobe at the front here, parietal in the middle, occipital right at the back there with our cerebellum just underneath. Temporal lobes are on the side, right in line with our temples there as well. So you can show the folks around you what your brain does and how it's organized, and you can explore a little bit more for yourself. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of GSC at Home. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. If you make your own brain hat, please send in your pictures using the hashtag GSC at Home. We'll see you again very soon and stay safe. Bye.